Hey guys, this video is a quick guide to show you how to set up the He3D K280 Delta 3D printer using Repetier Host and Repetier Firmware. Uh, first thing you want to do is go ahead and access the website crunchison.com. On here, uh, you'll see I've posted a an article that uh, walks you through uh, the steps that we're about to go through. And here, it'll essentially walk you through setting up your He3D uh, printer and configuring it to use the BL Touch sensor and Repetier firmware with dual extrusion. Uh, before you actually go through this guide, just be aware that uh, it's not an assembly guide. It's uh, expected to be used by uh, people who've already assembled their printers or are in the process of assembling their uh, printers and perhaps want to use Repetier firmware instead of the default Marlin firmware that comes with the printer. The first thing you're going to need to do is make sure you have a PC or Mac because you will need one of those to program the printer. Uh, you also want to make sure, as I said earlier, that your He3D printer is almost assembled or fully assembled. And you also want to make sure you've purchased the BL Touch sensor. So this is the sensor here. And again, there's links on this article that will show you how to go ahead and connect that to your board and program it along with the video here. Before you actually program your board, you will notice that this article will go through a few steps. Uh, I've labeled these pre-assembly tips and tricks, and it's simply there to give you a heads up or quick set of tips on how to properly assemble your printer and some modifications that you should do uh, before actually running this 3D printer. So I'm not going to go into every little detail here, but you can go and read the article. It'll explain to you how to wire the power adapter, for example, and how to actually add and connect an extra extruder to your factory OEM board and add a stepper motor driver for that particular extruder. Once you've gone ahead and read the article here uh, and you've gone ahead and installed the frame support, again, the links to those 3D printable supports are on the article. And you've also downloaded the adapter kit that allows you to mount the BL Touch adapter, the fan, and the Y um, adapter for dual extrusion to your printer, you can go ahead and follow the next steps. In here, we're going to now start configuring the firmware before we upload it to the printer. So at this stage, the printer does not need to be connected to your computer. All we're going to do is download this firmware here. So you can just go ahead and click on it once and it'll take you to the Dropbox link and the Dropbox page that will then allow you to download and save this to your computer. Um, you could just click here, no thanks, to continue to download, or if you want to sign up for Dropbox, feel free to do that. I've created a folder called He3D Test inside of my downloads folder, and that's where we're going to save my uh, original firmware file. So again, this is a firmware file that I have created. That's the one that's running on my printer, or at least that was running on my printer, that we're going to uh, modify and or at least I'll show you what you should modify if you want to customize it further for your printer. It should work if you've installed all of the add-ons that are described in the article. Now once you've downloaded this uh, file here you want to go ahead and uh, extract the contents of this zip file so you just right click on it and click on extract all. Uncheck this box here that says show extracted files for when completed, uh, because that way you could just directly see the folder that will be created when the files are extracted. So the files have been extracted here and you'll notice that inside of the Repetier firmware 2019-0130 folder, there's two files. So there's the config.json file, which is basically the uh, settings that my printer uses. And what we're going to do is actually load these settings inside of the Repetier configuration tool and generate a new firmware to upload to uh, the printer. Yes, there is a folder in here that also contains my original firmware, but I suggest that you go through the video and see how to actually load my backup settings here and tune the firmware to your printer such that if there are settings in my 
packaged firmware here that don't play well with your printer, you'll at least learn how to adjust them. So once you've downloaded and extracted these files here, we're gonna go back to the web browser. We can close the Dropbox, you no longer need that. And uh, the next step here is going to go to the Repetier firmware configuration page. So the URL for that Repetier firmware configuration page is up here where I'm hovering my mouse. And once you're on this page here, you want to make sure that it says firmware configuration tool version 1.03 and then go ahead and click choose file. We're going to navigate to where uh, we saved the uh, firmware that I downloaded earlier. So in this case, just navigate to Repetier Firmware 2019, select the config.json file and click open. When you do this, you'll notice that the firmware configuration tool will load and it will show all of these settings that are in my JSON file. And that's the great thing about the Repetier configuration tool. Um, if you actually save that JSON file and you lose your original firmware, you can come back in here and just load that JSON file and it'll set everything up for you so you can just regenerate a new firmware in a matter of minutes instead of tuning everything from scratch again. So here the settings have been preloaded and you just need to scroll down and familiarize yourself with uh, any of these settings here. If you have any questions about them, please feel free to post them in the comments section for the video. Um, but like I've said, if you're using a Heat3D K280 printer, there's really nothing you need to change here. Uh, the length, I've set mine to 555 millimeters. And yes, I know Heat3D claims a 600 millimeters height but that's actually technically incorrect because uh, as you'll see further down the line in the video um, you need some clearance between your end stops and the carriage in order for things to work properly the diagonal rod length here is 340 for the heat 3d printer at least on my printer and if you do need to adjust that please do so now you're going to leave most of these settings here alone and there's really not much that you need to change at this stage. So just go ahead and scroll down the list and click next. Now, if you're using the TMC2130 special drivers, make sure to enable this checkbox here. But if you're using the OEM stepper drivers that come with the K280, there's nothing for you to change here. The steps per millimeters are already all configured for you. Um, now, the thing that you do want to adjust is down here in the end stop distance after homing section. So what I've set the printer to do is to uh, position the end stops 60 millimeters, uh, at least position the carriage 60 millimeters away from the end stops after homing. And so this is the reason why instead of you getting 600 millimeters of 3D printing height, you're going to get about 555 or uh, plus minus one millimeter at the end of the day. And again, like I said, this is to, to allow you to make sure you can actually print objects that take up the full volume of the uh, printer horizontally and up to the maximum vertical height of 555 millimeters. Now, there's nothing else for you to change here. Uh, if you did add some sort of uh, center to your machine that detects jamming, uh, filament jamming, you can adjust that here. I plan on adding that to my printer, so that's why I've actually set these up here, but they are not yet mapped to a particular pin. So there's no need for you to worry about this particular setting here. Go ahead and click next. In this area, this is where you set up your extruder uh, parameters. So here I've set a minimum extruder temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. If you try to do an extrusion in the future in Repetier Host and nothing comes out, that's because your temperature is probably below 150 uh, degrees Celsius. So you can tune this to your liking if you want that. Uh, I've set mine to a maximum of 255 degrees Celsius. And for those of you who have hot ends that can reach much higher temperatures here, say for example, um, the, the E3D Tornado, um, you can go ahead and actually, or E3D Volcano rather, uh, you can go ahead and actually set this to something a little higher. 
uh, but I wouldn't go past 360 degrees for example. Now going down the rest of the settings here we have the extruder settings. In this particular case here extruder 0 on your printer is very likely going to be using the OEM stepper driver so it's basically this guy right here in this picture. Uh, when you get your board and if you purchased your printer and it only had one extruder then you very likely have four stepper drivers like these on your board and this stepper driver all the way to the left if you're looking at your board uh, has shown in this picture here is going to be extruder zero. Now if you're adding a second extruder according to my guide here just uh, if you're using a the same drivers that come with your printer you could just pluck it down in this left hand side here and that's it or if you're using different drivers like in my case i'm using a drv8825 uh, you do need to adjust the stepper uh, jumper cable uh, the jumper settings here and the stepper current uh, and uh, since these stepper drivers have a, a different resolution they basically are going to require that on the firmware configuration side you set your step resolution your extruder steps per resolution value to i believe it's going to be um, 92 because again this drv8825 is on the extruder uh, two or at least the secondary extruder mounting location on the MKS Gen L board and so 92 is going to be the steps per millimeter value that you put on there. You may have noticed extruder 0 has a different steps per millimeter value again that's 185 and it's because I'm using the factory stepper drivers on that channel so again if you're using the factory stepper drivers just leave everything has 185 for the steps per millimeters value. So while you're going down the list here, one thing you may want to adjust for your printer is the select command and deselect commands for the extruders. What I've done here is essentially embedded the filament switching procedure for the extruder selection process in the firmware. And what this basically does is it resets the extruder that is currently active back to zero, and then it retracts the extruder uh, the, the, the filament actually, or at least it extrudes the filament 95 millimeters at a feed rate of a thousand and then zeros the extruder again. And on upon the selecting the extruder, so when the firmware tells the when the, uh, the, 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 the code tells the firmware to switch extruders, again the same sequence happens. The extruder is zeroed, the filament gets retracted, and this sequence just keeps happening whenever there's filament switching. So in, in your in when you when you're setting up the G code uh, or you, your slicing program, there's no need to set up uh, extruder uh, select or extruder select code. However, you could set up an extra procedure if you want the the, the print head to move to a specific selection to a specific location before it performs the uh, the, the filament change. In this case, I did not change anything. In terms of positioning, I just swap filaments and continue printing. So we're going to just keep moving here. There's nothing that you need to change in this other area. I've set the uh, BL touch uh, offset from the nozzle value. So if you use this green uh, adapter that I have on here, if you go back to the guide and look at the uh, green adapter that I placed on my printer. I've uploaded this to Thingiverse so you can actually download and print this and also print the Y adapter and mount the BL shooter, your heat, your hot end and a 20 millimeter fan to your gantry and this is going to allow you to use your printer as configured here. So the offset for that a green adapter is already loaded here and all you do is you attach the BL touch printer to the BL touch sensor rather to the adapter and just use the firmware as is. There's also a probe start script and a probe finish script. 
This is essentially to allow the BL touch sensor to extend and retract. There's not much you need to change here. Just leave this alone and continue. You could adjust the bed leveling grid size here, but I found that seven works well for me. Again, the Repetier firmware takes up a lot of space on the uh, Atmega 2560 chip. So you don't want to set this value too high in any case. Leave the power positions here alone because further down the line, when I show you how to use the etcher calculator to, calcul to calibrate your, your printer, we'll use exactly these coordinates shown here. After this, you can go ahead and click next. There's nothing else that needs to be set up here. If you're using the OEM uh, LCD screen that comes with your K280, 3D printer, you can leave these settings alone. However, if you're using a different display, just click the drop down list here, pick the display that you want to use. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, but again, this has already been set up for the K3D, uh, the He3D rather, K280 3D printer. Set the model that you want the display to set for your printer and set the printer company value that you want. So you can change this to say, you know, your custom 3D printer or something other than He3D. After all of this is said and done, click next, next, and then you want to download two files from here. You want to download the complete firmware. So click here and download the complete firmware. I'm going to save this inside the He3D test folder I created earlier. Again, this is the one saved on the fourth, uh, on the second rather, so April 2nd. Make sure you keep track of the file names. And you also want to download a copy of your config.json file. Remember, it's the file that I described at the beginning of this video where it's essentially taking a copy of the settings we've been configuring so far here in the Repetier configuration utility and saving that so that in the future, if you want to modify something, we do not have to retype everything again. Once you've downloaded these two files, there's two more pieces of software that you're going to need. You're going to need the Repetier host software, which is basically what's going to allow you to connect uh, to your printer, slice the 3D files and actually send G code to your 3D printer. And you can access that by going to repetier.com and going down to the bottom of the website and you'll find that you have options for Windows, Linux and Mac. So just download the version that's for your platform and install it. Go to arduino.cc and then go to the software tab and click on downloads and download the version 1.8.9 for your platform. So in this case, if you're using Windows, download and install the Windows installer, same thing for Mac or Linux. Once you've installed the Arduino software, we can go back to your folder location. So in this case, I'm going to go back to the He3D folder and we're going to go ahead and extract the um, file, that the, the firmware that we just downloaded. So the one from today, April uh, 2nd. Go ahead and right click and extract all, just like we did before. And once the files are done extracting, we're gonna go ahead and connect the 3D printer. So take your USB cord from your 3D printer and then plug it into your computer. Since you've installed the Arduino uh, software, all the drivers should already be installed on your computer. And all you do need to do is just plug in your printer. You don't see it right now, but my printer has just been plugged in. Once you do that, you'll notice that the BL touch sensor on your printer is going to toggle back and forth a few times. It's just doing a self test. And after that completes, you go back to your computer, open up the Repetier firmware folder, go down to the Repetier folder, and then double click the repetier.ino file. This is going to open up in the Arduino software and we'll go ahead and uh, modify and download this firmware to your printer. Once the Arduino software has opened and it's showing the contents of the firmware file, uh, go ahead and click the tab that says configuration.h. And then you want to scroll down to the section that shows EEPROM or EEPROM. 
Uh, what we want to do here is essentially go ahead and change the EEPROM value from uh, whatever it is to 2. In this case, I could just do Control F to find and then type in EEPROM, hit enter. It'll jump directly to the section that has that value. And then you can go ahead and just change this 1 to a 2. The reason we're doing this is because uh, your printer comes preloaded with EEPROM values that are embedded in the board um, for the Marlin firmware, but we want to make sure we erase all of those before uh, downloading Liberty. So you're going to upload the software twice. Once you make this change here, make sure you go to Tools, and then go to the Board area. Make sure that the uh, board that's selected is the Mega 2560. The processor should also be the same thing. The COM port, usually there's going to be only one COM port, but if you have more than one and you try to upload this firmware and it fails, just try a come back here and check a different COM port and try to upload the, uh, the firmware again. You want to make sure you set the programmer to uh, AVR RISP Mark II. And once that's done, go ahead and click the upload button. Now uh, you'll notice that on your MKS board, on your 3D printer, there's going to be a blue and red light that are going to be flashing. That's normal. And when the firmware is done uploading, you'll notice on the bottom left corner here, it'll show that the firmware is done uploading. And once that happens, we'll upload, we'll, we'll change the EPRM value back to one and then upload the firmware again. So I'll give it some time for that to happen. So this step is going to take a couple of minutes, so leave it alone. The firmware is going to download, and when it's done, you'll see that it says done uploading here. Now, when that finishes, go back to the EEPROM uh, EE column here and change this number 2 back to a 1. Once you do that, upload the firmware again. And when the firmware is done uploading, we'll proceed. Okay, so when the firmware is done uploading, we are done with the Arduino software and uh, you can either close it or minimize it and uh, go back to your desktop and then launch the Repetier host. In this case, it's right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on it. And once this launches, we're gonna just set it up really quickly before connecting to the printer. You can see I've already sort of set mine up here and uh, I'm just gonna walk you through how to get to this stage. First, you have to make sure you go to the config tool area and then click on print settings. And here on the connection, you want to make sure that it's on serial connection. The proper COM port is selected. So I would choose the same port that you picked in the Arduino software earlier. And then uh, leave the baud rate to 115,200. Uh, this is the same thing that we set up in the firmware. The transfer protocol can be left to auto detect. And you can actually just go ahead and leave all the settings alone and just set them as, the, as what you see on screen here. Uh, for the print settings, uh, set all your settings like I've shown on screen here. And then what you want to make sure that you do is uh, go on the bottom right hand side here and check. Make sure you have this checkbox for printer has SD card enabled because then this allows you to see all the files that you're about to print from an SD card, or you can even download and save things on the SD card and then print them from the host if you want to do that. Um, on the extruder tab, I've set my settings here according to uh, my printer capabilities. This should work for your printer, uh, even with the factory extruder. And what you do want to make sure is check the box here saying that the printer has a mixing extruder so that allows you to basically tell Repetier Host that, hey, you have two filaments that are being fed into one uh, printing extruder, one, one extruder. And uh, set the extruder diameter. Mine has a 400 micron hole. Uh, if yours has a different value, make sure that you type the proper value in here. As for printer shape, the printer shape you want to choose is a raw stock printer. And this is going to have a circular print shape. Once you do this, set the print radius and the height to the values that are shown on screen and go ahead and hit apply or okay and you'll be at this stage. Now, one last thing uh, before we end this uh, first series of the video, 
I'm gonna have you connect to the printer. So on the top left corner here, click the connect button once and you should see a whole bunch of messages on the bottom section of WebAtia host. This is essentially just the host letting you know that uh, it's successfully connected to the printer and it's also just uh, describing additional data from the printer, which right now you don't care about. Uh, at this stage, you can go ahead and plug your printer into the power outlet. This whole time, we've just been connected to the printer using the USB port. So at this stage, you can connect your printer to the power outlet, and this is going to allow you to home the printer. What we wanna make sure is happening is, before you hit this home button here, um, you wanna just be ready to sort of unplug your printer or hit the emergency stop button up here to stop things from moving because if you did not properly wire your motors, they might move in the opposite direction. So hit the home button. Once I hit this home button here, it's going to home my printer and it looks like it moved in the right direction. The printer will also move the gantry down 60 millimeters away from your end stops. And that is normal. That's how it's programmed in the firmware. If you do not like that behavior, uh, you can always go back in the firmware, watch the beginning of this video um, on how to go ahead and change that and upload a new firmware.